Hey everyone, my name is Paul Jun and this is John Maybe. Hi. And we are here to answer some of your questions from the Hippo Mailbag. And today we have a question from the Hippo EM board review site, and this is a practice question, so let's get started. All right. So, a patient presents to the emergency department requesting a rabies vaccine. He stayed several hours earlier he was bitten on the arm by a rat while cleaning out his garage. Which of the following is the best step in management? So let's take a quick look at this question. This is a question about rabies vaccines, and it's a ripe for a lot of testing. And the biggest question is, well, when do people need rabies vaccines? Sure. And in this particular case, this person or this patient was saying that they were bitten on the arm by a rat while cleaning out the garage. Presumably, this is in the United States. And so let's uh, review really quickly before we answer the question or go through the answer choices, the problem with uh, rabies or the condition of rabies. So rabies in general, remember the highest risk factors for the animals uh, as far uh, as the animals that can infect you with rabies. In the United States, it's going to be skunks, raccoons, foxes, coyotes, and bats. Um, dogs are probably in the entire world, in the developing world, especially greater than 9% of rabies vaccine or the rabies virus is going to be transmitted through dogs. But in the United States and developed countries, those are going to be the ones. Small rodents like rats, mice, um, or even lagomorphs like rabbits and hares, they are not uh, going to be at high risk for transmitting rabies vaccine, uh, rabies virus. And in general, they are. Uh, there is no documented cases inside the United States of mm -hmm. transmission of rabies virus through those small rodents or lagomorphs. And so in this case, bitten by a rat, that sucks, but the concern for rabies uh, virus is going to be extremely low, negligible. And let's go through the answer choices. Yeah, so let's take a look at these. So the first one is administer rabies vaccine. So we just went through this. Uh, this would not be a correct answer. Okay. Administer rabies vaccine and inject immunoglobulin into the bite site. So again, this is an incorrect answer, but for what it's worth, if you do have a person who does require post-exposure prophylaxis because of high risk for rabies exposure, then what you want to do is you're going to give the rabies immunoglobulin. And sure. that is when you use uh, the immunoglobulin, inject it. You actually infiltrate the wound as much as you can. And the rest of that uh, 20 units per kilogram, you're going to actually give IM generally to the deltoids um, or the glutes if you need to. Uh, the vaccine itself, you would administer that on days 0, 3, 7, and 14. Okay. Um, it was a five-dose schedule went down to a four-dose day, four dose schedule, and those uh, that vaccine is one milligram of the deltoid IM. Sweet. So the next answer is observe for rabies symptoms. So uh, again, this person is low risk for uh, rabies virus exposure, but in cases of a concern where they're lower risk, um, but not completely zero risk, you can actually observe the animal for 10 days, mm -hmm. um, you probably don't quarantine the patient, <laughs> uh, put them under house arrest and constant monitoring and surveillance. Um, but you can observe them for up to 10 days, the, pa the animal, uh, and then uh, see if they develop any signs of rabies itself, mm -hmm. agitation, altered, hypersalivation, hydrophobia kind of thing. All right, right. And the last one is provide local wound care. So again, in this case, this person was bit by a rat. Very, very, very low concern for rabies virus transmission and providing local wound care is the appropriate thing. So washing it out, soap and water, right. and then uh, if you need to update the tetanus and or give antibiotics because of the concern for it, then you do that. So the answer is provide local wound care. There you go. Awesome. So that's it for this segment. Stay tuned until next time when we answer more of your questions from the HIPAA mailbag.